After weeks of intense work, long nights, and countless tests at Starbase, SpaceX has finally launched Starship for the 11th time. And this one was unlike anything we've seen before. But while this mission was a huge success overall, not everything went perfectly. A few unexpected issues appeared along the way. And in this video, we'll break down exactly what happened, why it happened, and what it means for the future of Starship. But before we dive in, make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future updates. The afternoon at Starbase started with that familiar buzz of anticipation. But this time, something was different. The venting before liftoff seemed weaker than usual. Still, once the countdown hit zero, all went as expected. With a deafening roar, 33 Raptor engines ignited simultaneously, unleashing over 7,000 tons of thrust. The sheer force shook the Texas coast as the rocket began its smooth ascent into the sky. And for anyone who's been following Starship's journey, this wasn't just another test. The rocket climbed steadily through the atmosphere, passing max Q, the moment of maximum aerodynamic stress. Every system, every engine, every control surface seemed perfectly in sync. Down below, the now legendary Pad 1 performed like a seasoned veteran one final time, handling the enormous power with stability and precision. That's significant because Pad 1 has been the heart of so many of Starship's milestones. But after this flight, it's set to undergo a massive transformation. So in a way, this wasn't just a test flight. It was a farewell performance for a launch pad that helped shape SpaceX's future. At 2 minutes and 39 seconds into the flight, the booster's engines shut down, a perfect main engine cutoff. Just seconds later, Starship's upper stage engines ignited, initiating hot staging the maneuver where the upper stage fires before fully separating from the booster. It's a tricky move, but SpaceX has refined it brilliantly over recent flights. This time, the separation was clean and smooth, exactly as planned. The booster then flipped around and began its return journey. Twelve of its 13 engines reignited for the boost back burn, and though one engine failed to light, it made no difference. SpaceX builds redundancy into everything, ensuring that even when one part underperforms, the mission continues. The booster then prepared for its final descent, shutting down engines in sequence and ejecting excess mass. This was also the last time this particular system would ever be used on a version 1 booster, a symbolic end to the first generation of Starship hardware. Then came the landing burn. At just over four kilometers above the ocean, 13 Raptor engines roared back to life, slowing the massive booster. And get this, the engine that failed during Flight 10's landing worked perfectly this time. SpaceX also tested a new landing sequence, lighting five engines before transitioning to three for a smoother, more controlled descent, a technique that will become standard on booster version 3. After a steady burn, the booster made a soft splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. Meanwhile, the Starship upper stage continued its ascent, performing beautifully as it reached its suborbital trajectory. Around 8 minutes and 46 seconds in, the engines shut down one by one, marking the completion of ascent. Next came payload deployment, another critical milestone. About 16 minutes into flight, the onboard cameras switched views to the payload bay. At 17 minutes, the payload door opened, signaling the start of deployment. By the 25-minute mark, all eight payloads were released successfully. This was only the second time SpaceX had deployed payloads using Starship, but it worked flawlessly. A few minutes later, Starship performed a brief in-space engine reignition, lasting just three seconds, but incredibly important. It proved that the ship can restart its engines in orbit, something essential for lunar and Mars missions. That made it three consecutive successful in-space relights. Then came the real test. Re-entry. Around 40 minutes into the flight, the ship began slicing back through the atmosphere, surrounded by fiery plasma. Viewers watching the live feed saw brilliant streaks of red and orange wrapping around the hull, the most visually dramatic part of any Starship mission. But this was also where things had gone wrong in previous flights. The aft flaps, 
crucial for controlling re-entry, had taken serious damage before. This time, though, they held firm. The improvements SpaceX made, from stronger materials to better heat shielding, clearly paid off. By one hour and two minutes into the mission, Starship was nearing the ocean. The onboard cameras switched to a view of the sea below, signaling the start of the landing sequence. The engines reignited, flipping the ship from horizontal to vertical for touchdown. One engine appeared to cut off early, but it didn't matter. The ship splashed down softly. Another huge win. Unfortunately, SpaceX's video feed cut out briefly near the end, likely due to seawater interference. But telemetry confirmed it. Both stages completed their missions almost perfectly. Now some of you might be wondering, why didn't SpaceX use the Mechazilla Tower to catch the booster this time, like they planned to do in future missions? Instead, the booster splashed down in the ocean, just like the upper stage. There's actually a very logical reason for that. See, Mechazilla isn't just a tower. It's one of the most advanced pieces of ground equipment SpaceX has ever built. Those two massive steel chopstick arms are designed to catch a 230-foot booster moving at hundreds of kilometers per hour, with only a few meters of margin for error. It's an incredibly precise operation, controlled by hydraulic and electric actuators that cost tens of millions of dollars to build and calibrate. Elon Musk has even said publicly that the tower must survive even if the booster is lost. That gives you a good idea of SpaceX's priorities. Losing a rocket is acceptable. Losing the tower isn't. The entire Starship program depends on it. That's why for Flight 11, SpaceX chose to play it safe. This mission was about testing performance, not recovery. The engineers were focusing on how the engines handled multiple restarts, how the vehicle responded during hot staging, and how new thermal protection materials held up during re-entry. Trying a catch would have added too many variables, and one small misfire could have turned the entire tower into scrap metal. So instead, SpaceX opted for a controlled splashdown. The booster executed its landing burn sequence, gave engineers full telemetry on engine thrust curves and propellant distribution, and safely ditched in the Gulf of Mexico. This way, they could gather all the data they needed without risking their most expensive piece of infrastructure. This flight was more than just another test. It also marked the end of an era. Flight 11 was the last mission for booster version 1 and launch pad 1 two systems that laid the foundation for everything Starship has achieved so far. Let's start with Pad 1. This launch pad built at Starbase in Boca Chica, Texas, has been in service since 2021, but after 11 launches, it has started to show some problems. When Starship lifts off, 33 Raptor engines unleash over 7,400 tons of thrust. That's roughly equivalent to two Saturn V rockets firing at once. The force is so extreme that the first few flights literally blew chunks of concrete and steel out of the pad structure. After Flight 1, engineers had to rebuild the entire flame trench using reinforced steel plates and add a massive water deluge system to absorb the shockwave. Even then, the pad takes a beating every time. Flight 11 was the final use of that setup. After this, SpaceX plans to completely retire Pad 1. Essentially, they're bringing it up to the standard of Pad 2, which is now under construction a few hundred meters away. Pad 2 will include a thicker steel flame diverter plate, a high-pressure water system capable of pumping 350,000 gallons per minute, and a new quick disconnect arm that allows faster fueling and detanking. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more updates on Starship.